debt. Uh -huh. The second royalty is a given the party adopted an interest in the inheritance. The making one an heir implies a relationship to an inheritance. A man does not adopt another to a title, but to an estate. Not only did he give me a name, he not only gave me a title, he gave me an estate. I keep going back to Wilson's Winston sermon. I don't know what floor I'm going to be on. I hope it's not real high, but it's going to be high enough, and I'm going to have a floor space. This is all, all you know, thinking. Is, is that I'm going to have a lot of space to invite a lot of people over for a banquet and relax for a thousand years and I won't have to be galloping and gulping. I can be sipping and having a great time together. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to be worried about when are you going to leave. You've been here an hour already. When are you going to leave? I have to have a nap. <laughs> no, I'm not going to have that. We can relax for a thousand years and eat and not get fat. Won't that be great? Boy, Boy, I'll tell you what. There'll be no fat food in heaven and no fat people in heaven. Well, Johnny will go, but uh, he, he, won't be, he won't be quite as large in heaven. No. <laughs> okay. Forget that. I'm supposed to be nice. All right. So God, in adopting us for his children, gives us a glorious inheritance. The inheritance of the saint in life. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Number one, it is pleasant. It is an inheritance of light. Number two, it is safe. God keeps the inheritance for his children. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. We cannot lose our inheritance. Did you know that if 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 you were put in an, if you were put in someone's inheritance and they got mad at you and they got mad at you, they could take you out. Yep. You could be removed from their inheritance if they get mad at you. God keeps our inheritance safe. No one can take it from him. He's got it in my name. I'm his child, and he is going to secure that for me when I get to heaven. Now, I've got the 14th floor, room 504. That's my room. It's, it's safe from anyone else taking it. And keeps them for the inheritance, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, so that they cannot be hindered from taking possession. When I get to heaven, that I will have a key issued to me. When I get into the gate, God said, this is your key, this is where you're going to be, and this is where you're going to stay for eternity. I think. I mean, I, I know that's true, but I'm just saying, yes, where that is, I don't know. But I think I'm going to have a specific place. I just thought about that. What if I came over to Johnny's place and said, I think I'd like to have your place for a couple thousand years. You know, that, I like your place better than my place. I don't know how all that's going to work, but we're going to have our mansion somewhere, aren't we? We're going to have our room somewhere. Uh -huh. Because we, are, we have inherited from God as his children a glorious place. Number three, there is no dis disinheritance. For the saints are co-heirs with Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 if I ever get there. Nay, Colossians 1 18, nay there are members of Christ and members cannot be disinherited but by the head. Only Christ can disinherit us, and he's promised us never to leave us or to forsake us. Yeah. Number four. The heirs, I like this, never die. The heirs to the promise never die. So how long do we get to keep our inheritance? Forever. We never die. Right. <clears throat> I never thought of that. This inheritance will last forever. 
It continues to replenish itself. It never runs out. The light never runs out. The joy never runs out. The happiness never runs out. I never get bored. God continuously, forever and for eternity, to supply us with all the inheritance of His Son, and He gives us His best. Whew. Hallelujah for that. If I was a shouting Baptist, I'd shout. Number two, how do God's adopting and man's adopting different? So then how is God's adoption different than man's adoption? Number one, man adopts to supply a defect. In other words, when usually when a family cannot have children, their option is to adopt. So since they don't have children, they want to adopt. But God does not adopt upon this account. He had a son of his own, the Lord Jesus Christ. He'd been smart if he just kept him. But he wanted Jesus Christ to have more children. He was his natural son, and the son of his love testified by a voice from heaven. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, this is my beloved son. Never was there any son so like the father. He was exalted. The express image of his person. Jesus Christ was the express image of his father. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He was such a son as was worth more than all the angels of heaven. Being made so much better than the angels, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4, so that God adopts not out of necessity, but out of pity. I'm glad God wanted to adopt some more children, aren't you? If God was going to have a heaven, and God is going to have eternity, I'm glad that God wanted to adopt some folks to share heaven with Him. Amen. Hallelujah for that, amen. Hallelujah. Number two, when a man adopts, he adopts but one heir. Normally, we can't afford to adopt but one person. Heck, sorry, many families can't adopt more than me. I had the word heck, I shouldn't have said. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit. Uh, Bob's not here. Okay. So, we can only, usually we, we can afford only one child. There are parents who say, we cannot afford to have but one child. You know who usually has more than one child? The poor people. You ever notice that? Yeah. Poor people who don't have any money have 12 kids. You understand? The people who have money have it. And people and that can't afford a child have children. Have you notice that? And people who have money, who can take care of children, don't want any children. Or have but one child. And bringing many sons to glory, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. Oh, may a poor trembling Christian say, Why should I ever look for this privilege to be a child of God? It is true. If God did act as man, if he adopted only one son, then you might despair. If God says, I'm only going to choose the best from the bunch, we would be most miserable. Uh -huh. I'm afraid that God wouldn't have picked most of us. Now, he may have picked Dorothy, but that's, that's the only person I know in this group that he might have picked. <laughs> Now, I don't know that for sure. Bill, and you, Bill, you and I would be in deep trouble. But he had pity on us and adopted us into the family in the same family that he had picked Dorothy. Now, I don't understand how he could pick a good person and a bad person. And we're all in the same family and we all have the same inheritance. Now, that's amazing if you ask me. 
But he adopts millions. He brings many sons to glory. Indeed, this may be the reason why a man adopts but one. Because he does not have enough estate for more than one. If you, if you, have, if you have two kids, you've got to find two bedrooms. In my case, we slept in the same bed in the same room until we got in high school. We didn't have but one room. God has many rooms. He can adopt as many people as he wants to adopt, and he's got room for all of us, according to Winston Hall's Sermon on Heaven, right? If he should adopt many, his land would not hold it, natural man, but God has enough land to give to all his children and has space left over. In my father's house there are many mansions. John chapter 14, number 3. Man, will, man when he adopts, does it with ease. Basically. It is but sealing a deed and the thing is done. Really, it's not quite that simple. But when God adopts, it puts him to a far greater expense. It sets his wisdom, his wisdom on work to find out a way to adopt us. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, things got messed up. And God, in his wisdom, had to find a way of able to adopt us legally. Legally, we were sinners and could not be adopted as sinners. Somehow, that idea of becoming a sinner had to change. It was no easy thing to reconcile heaven and hell. To make the children of wrath the children of the promise. And when God in his infant wisdom had found out a way, it was no easy way. It caused God the death of his natural son. To make us his adopted sons. When God was about to constitute us sons and heirs, he could not seal the deal but by the blood of his own son, Jesus Christ. It did not cost God so much to make us creatures as it caused him to make us sons. To make us creatures cost but the speaking of one word, to make us sons cost him the infusion of blood. Now maybe that puts a little bit more perspective that he just adopted us. It took a lot more than that. Number four, man, when he adopts, settles but earthly privileges upon his heir. He only can give what he has earthly. But God has more to give than what's earthly. This is but a touch of what we have. God gives us land. God gives us air. God gives us himself. But one day he's going to give us an inheritance that's going to last forever. And it's not in this world. Number three, God, let me finish it, but God settled heavenly privileges, justification and glorification. Man must entail their land upon the person they adopt. But God does more. He not only entails his land upon his children, but he himself upon them. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 says, I will be their God. Not only heaven is their portion, but God is their portion. I will adopt you in the family and I will be your God. 